So I just recently beat Glover for Nintendo 64, which is one of those games that's memorable for being a Nintendo 64 exclusive. But don't worry, the Nintendo 64 version is also on PC. Well, that was when it came out during 1998. It was brought over as a remastered version on PC, but we're supposed to be getting this on the modern systems like PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch, but despite there being a teaser trailer actually saying that, I don't know when it's actually going to come out as of yet, so hopefully it'll be out sooner than later. But anyways, let's talk about Glove for SI. Basically played the 64 version, and well, looking into the PS1 version, it just does not look great or play that great, so... The thing is, is like I wanted to make this video, not only just because I've beaten the game, but because on April 30th, which I'm sure I'm going to upload on that day, well, the game got an FRK release, which a lot of people seem to think that this was just a PS1 version slapped on with a 64-bit logo. And I did some research on it, and I can clearly say that it's not the PS1 version that people made it out to be. So, I just thought I could help you guys with that one. Essentially with Glover is that the wizard dude has been frozen over and something went wrong with his experiment. And so one of his gloves became evil while the other one has to go save the world from all the evil that is. So all the gems have been scattered around and it's your job to bring world peace. Well, you have to bring the gems back to the place and then that's it. But the thing is, it's all this guys under balls, and I'm probably going to be saying balls a lot, so take a swing, a drink, whenever I say something about that. You make sure you guys listen to, or at least just do the tutorial level, because this will teach you the basics of the pl gameplay. Because if you guys don't, then, well, that's on you for not understanding how to play the game. As there's going to be tutorial stuff all over the place, so you have no problem being able to learn how to play the game. You can actually switch between different balls, like maybe a bouncing ball, the bowling ball, a marble ball, and a gem ball. Oh, and don't bounce a gem because you'll just lose your life. And yes, this game does have lives, which is pretty easy to grab. There'll be like a life little logo somewhere around there which you guys can grab, or depending on how much score or maybe how many points you get, you'll gain more lives by getting the garabs. If you collect all the garabs throughout the world, of each world, maybe like a regular world or maybe the treasure world, then you should be able to access a special level. But to get the Garabs, they're pretty much everywhere, including defeating certain enemies in the game as well. So if there's like some sort of things that you're stuck, like let's just say that there is a switch underwater, you use the bowling ball or maybe a marble ball and you can use you can utilize that by going to the thing and that's it but there are gonna be some obstacles in the way but if you guys don't feel like swimming you can just jump on the ball and you can just you know run on it but the thing is the controls are inverted and it's pretty much a pretty good reason as to why it's inverted which I'm sure you guys will figure this out when you go along with the game the music is pretty memorable for its part and Glover, well, everyone remembers Glover as an Nintendo 64 game rather than a PlayStation game, and I really don't blame him one bit, as this game was originally from Interactive Studios and was from Hasbro, so. The thing is with this game is that we're supposed to be getting a sequel, but more than 50% of the game, it was end up being canceled, which is sad. But I have heard that Pico Interactive has picked up the rights of the game and is planning on finishing the sequel. So, let's hope we get the sequel finished, because if they do get it finished, then I do have a lot of things to say about this game. If, if it's going to even happen, that is. But anyhow, there's going to be some tricky platforming or anything else like that. Which, this game is a mix between a marble ball game or a platformer. It's like a mix between the two. And there are going to be some bosses which range from somewhat easy to hard. Oh, and I know people were complaining about the monkey boss when they haven't probably, well, talked about the Frankenstein boss. That guy was a freaking pain in the butt to deal with. I think he's worse than the monkey boss. That's just me, though. But anyhow... Some of these bosses may have their own, like, key ways of being defeated, as there are some sort of weak spots on them that you can find. 
or you just need to hit some sort of object, and then that's pretty much it from here. But it doesn't mean like every level in the game is going to be super easy to deal with. Sometimes it might slip because the ball or whatever just decides to go wherever it wants to go sometimes. And that happens to me sometimes. Sometimes when we guys play this, there will also be some sort of hidden wall, you can say. It's still probably hides of some garrups or perhaps maybe some sort of key that you guys need to complete the level with. But at the same time, there's going to be some sort of challenge because sometimes there's going to be some obstacles where you have to be really careful with your ball because the ball, there's actually two different ways to lose some lives. One, if your ball gets hit a couple of times, or if you get hit by a couple of times, or if your ball falls off, and you or you fall off, then that's it. But there are some checkpoints here and there, but the only way to do it is throw the ball into this big portal thing that you'll see, and then that's pretty much it. That's kind of like how the checkpoint system works here. But don't worry, the only there are a couple of ways to get past these obstacles. You bounce the ball, you smack the ball, you toss it, whatever it may be. There are several different ways to do it, which you'll have to come up with your own strategy to do such thing. But like I said, there are going to be enemies in the way. Some enemies I just can't find or at least see, see a reason as to how I'm supposed to kill them or whatever, but there are some I can easily beat them. But there are going to be some switches that require either the ball or for you to smack. Well, or as in like a slam or a ground pound, as I can say for the glove, as yes. One of your defenses is a ground pound, or it's just a big giant slam of your fist, and that's pretty much it. But, I could just say that you won't have any problem figuring that out once you figure out the tutorial, that is. This game is dirt cheap on Nintendo 64, and what's cool is that Pico Interactive has done a limited rerun of the Nintendo 64 cartridges, so meaning they've made brand new copies for the Nintendo 64, which you guys can also grab from Pico's website. There's also this collector's edition, which also comes with the Steam version of the game, and the glove for plushie. I want the glove for plushie. So the thing is, is that if you guys like platforming games, but want a different complete spin of things, then this 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 is definitely the game you guys are gonna be looking forward to playing. Just avoid the PlayStation version, as it's just an inferior way to play it. As that one uses the D-pad, but I have heard you could use the joystick. But the game just does not look a part like it was in Town 64 or does it even play the part. Which just looks way off than it should have. The game should have stayed on the Town 64 and Windows. I don't think there was any reason to bring it to the PlayStation. Considering the PlayStation version received negative reviews when it first came out. I hope you guys will enjoy playing Glover as much as I did.